talks about area between two curves. So what I have graphed for you here is problem number two. We've got a couple functions here, y equals 2x plus 5, and y equals x squared plus 2x plus 1. You might notice that that's x plus 1 squared. I don't think we really need that. But uh, we're trying to find the area between these two curves. Now, I guess the way you can think of it is if I were to try and find the area underneath, say, the curve y equals 2x plus 5 and the x-axis, I would just integrate that function. And then to get this, this shaded portion here, I could subtract off the area underneath this curve. In other words, I can find uh, the area by subtracting those two integrals. Now we're going to kind of combine it into one operation and I'm going to do things uh, a little bit different than you might expect in order to set up work that we're going to do in section 7.2. So here's how we're going to work this. And it kind of reflects the fact that when we find areas we can think of them as Riemann sums. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little slice here through my interval and I want to try and calculate the area of that one slice. So let's find the area of one rectangle. Now the area of the rectangle, the area of any rectangle is going to be the width times the height or the height times the width. So height times width and the width of this is going to be pretty simple it's going to be delta x or I'm going to call it dx now the height is going to be the difference in the y coordinates so the top minus the bottom times width. Well, the width is just dx, so let's put that in there. I like having the differential there because it's telling me that overall, when I finish finding this expression, I've got to have that in terms of x. That's the variable that I'm going to be working with. So, all right, I need an expression for the top function in terms of x. Well, I guess that'd be 2x plus 5 minus the bottom function, which is x squared plus 2x plus 1 dx and that's what I was looking for is the area of that one rectangle now you might remember that when we were first working with areas we were trying to find uh, these areas as the limit of a Riemann sum and you can indeed set this up as the limit of a Riemann sum, and that, that limit becomes a Riemann integral. I'm going to kind of bypass a lot of that stuff and just jump right to the integral. Before I get there, though, let's see if we can't clean this up a little bit. If I distribute that negative sign, what would I get? Well, I get a minus x squared, minus 2x, and a minus 1. And then combining like terms, I believe I'll get 4 minus x squared dx. Yay! So then what? Well, that's the area of one such rectangle. I've got to figure out the area of all such possible rectangles. So let's think a little bit. How far to the left could I move and still be, still have this rectangle trapped between these two curves? I go all the way down to negative 2 to the left and moving over to the right I could still be in this region as, as far as x equals 2. So to set up the area then, calculation for the area, what I'll do is I'll integrate this function between negative 2 and 2 of 4 minus x squared dx. Now that's the important part right there is getting that part set up. So let me pause here for a second. Are you okay with what we did to get that set up? All right. 
Now, I want to practice something that, that I pointed out in section 5.5. You might notice that I've got a symmetric interval, negative 2 to 2. Let's call it a symmetric interval. And when you have a symmetric interval, if you have an even function or an odd function, there's some shortcuts. What do we got here? That's an even function. If you graph this, it's a parabola. It's symmetric with respect to the y-axis. So, okay. What we can do then is do this. Instead of doing the integral from negative 2 to 2, we'll do twice the integral from 0 to 2 of 4 minus x squared. It doesn't make a huge difference, but it does make a little bit of a nice difference. I'll get twice the function 4x minus x cubed over 3 between 0 and 2. It just means you're going to be plugging in a 0 as opposed to a 2. Yeah? Well, the even function is this. It's not this. Oh, okay. Yeah, so our integrand has the even function. Uh, both of these by themselves were not even functions because neither of them was symmetric with respect to the y-axis. All right. Okay, so let's take a look at y equals 4 minus x squared. That graph, and this is what we're integrating, this graph is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. So what we're doing is essentially saying, all right, if I integrate from negative 2 to 2, that's going to give me this entire area. Instead of that, I can integrate from 0 to 2 and then double things because the area on the left and the area on the right above the x-axis and below the function are the same. So that's, that's what's going on here. But it's not reflected in either of these functions. Neither of these functions is an even function. So let's finish this up then. It's going to be twice 8 minus 8 thirds minus, well, 0. So it's going to be 32 thirds when you do out all the math. All right. So you don't have to use that shortcut. It's just nicer than trying to plug in a negative 2 and then distribute that negative sign, etc. It's a good trick, and it's something to look out for if you have an odd interval, or excuse me, a symmetric interval, like negative 2 to 2. Okay, so let's try problem number 4 then. Now these first few I have drawn for you. At some point we're going to have to venture out on our own and draw these graphs for ourselves. But for right now, let's take a look at problem four. We've got two functions in problem number four, y equals x cubed and y equals x squared. Which one of them do you think is on top, the x cubed or the x squared function? Mm. Some divided opinions here. So y equals x squared, y equals x cubed. I guess the way, one way you could see that as to which function is going to be bigger or taller there is to pick, pick some number in between here, say 0.5. If I squared 0.5, I'll get 0.25. If I cube 0.5, I get 0 0.125. 0 0.25 is going to be bigger. So in the interval 0 to 1, so 0 to 1, y equals x squared is actually going to be a bigger function. And then this would be y equals x cubed. 
Now, much like the last one, I want you to get in the habit of working with this one slice here. What's the thickness of that slice? What's its width? Dx. That's the thickness. Dx, delta x, synonymous. So area of one rectangle. So the area of that one rectangle is going to be the height times the width. The height is going to be the top minus the bottom times dx. What could I fill in here? Top minus bottom. Thanks. x squared minus x cubed, dx. Beautiful. Now I need to find not just the area of one rectangle, I need to find the area of all such rectangles. So that means integration. What should I set up as my integral? Good. The integral of this from 0 to 1. 0 to 1, x squared minus x cubed, dx. And this seems like it's going to work out pretty friendly. The antiderivative here is x cubed over 3 minus x to the fourth over 4 between 0 and 1. So 1 third minus 1 fourth, well, minus 0. 1 third minus 1 fourth is 1 twelfth. That was easy. Yeah, not too bad. Okay, so kind of a friendly one there to follow up our first example. Uh, I went through it kind of quickly. So if there's some questions here, let me know. Are we good on problem four? Okay. Hada? No? All right. <clears throat> Let's take a look at problem number six then. Y equals x minus 1, and then the other function here is y equals x minus 1 cubed. Now this one's going to demand a little bit more attention and a little bit of care. As with the previous couple problems, I want to start out by finding the area of one little slice. So let me take a slice through my region. Let's draw it right here, say. I want to find the area of one rectangle. Okay, so the area of one rectangle is going to be the height times the width. So it's going to be top minus bottom, then times dx. But here's where we have to start being a little bit careful. What's the top minus bottom? Shut it right in there. Ah, so let me put in some points here. This is 0. That's 1, and that's 2. It depends on which side of x equal 1 you're at, right? So the top function to the right here is x minus 1. To the left of 1, top function is x minus 1 cubed. So it depends on where you're at. Now, realistically, the way that you, know, you probably should do this is to set up two integrals. Integrate from 0 to 1, top minus bottom would be the x minus 1 cubed minus x minus 1, and then do a separate integral from 1 to 2, you know, just reversing the order on those two. So that's, theoretically, that's, that's one way to do it and perhaps how you should do it. But let me help you out with a little bit of a shortcut. 
and it's not something I'm going to try and prove to you here, but the this area here and this area here are the same. So these two areas are symmetric. So what I'll do is instead of doing two integrals, we'll do one integral and double the result. So let's just go with this half of things. We'll do, well, let's set up our area of one rectangle first. It's going to be x minus 1 minus x minus 1 cubed dx. That's the area of one of these rectangles. Now, as far as my integral is concerned, let's set this up to integrate from 1 to 2. And I'm doubling that to account for the fact that I've got two areas here. x minus 1 x minus 1 cubed dx. All right. Well, that's not so bad. Um, until you start looking at it a little bit more closely and realizing, well, wait a minute. i got to deal with this x minus 1 cubed here. And unless you're really good with Pascal's triangle, you might not want to cube that out. What you can't do is you can't cube this out as x cubed minus 1. You can't distribute that 3 there. So let's try and find a different workaround other than cubing that out. And the different workaround is a u substitution. What could I let u equal? x minus 1. Excellent. So let's let u equal x minus 1. What's that mean du is equal to? Yeah, du is going to equal 1 dx. Or you can just write dx. Now, personally, I'm also in the habit of changing my units. The fact that we got du equals dx is really nice. It means that this one's going to work out really, really simple. But let's change our units. I need u of 1 and u of 2. What are my new units going to be? Yeah, 1 and 0. Thank you. So... So with that change of units, this is going to be a really simple integral. Let's see here. Twice the integral from 0 to 1 of u minus u cubed du. The nice thing about changing our units is that we don't have to go back. We're done with the x's. We got simpler expressions. And all we have to do is finish integrating. So it's going to be twice 0 to 1 of u squared over 2 minus u to the 4th over 4, which is twice of 1 half minus 1 fourth minus, well, when you put in a 0, you're just going to get a 0. Inside the parenthesis, that difference is one quarter. One quarter times two is going to give me one half. Okay. Not so bad. Uh, how are we looking on problem six there? All right, so the first few problems we've started out, I've given you the graph. You might not always be getting the graph, in which case you're going to have to do, I don't know, I'll say this politely, some work. So let's do some ones where you actually have to find the graph. We'll start with problem number 18. of you want to borrow some toys here that's fine
All right, so our functions in problem number 18 look like this. y equals negative x cubed plus 2. y equals x minus 3. And that's going to be also bounded by the curves of x equal 1 and x equal negative 1. By the way, what do the curves x equal 1 and x equal negative 1 look like? I'm being loose by calling them curves. Vertical lines, good. So it's kind of giving you a left and a right bound for your graphs. So the first thing we should do is kind of try and figure out what our region looks like. So let's graph that. Let's enter both of these expressions on our graphing calculator. So I've got negative x raised to the third power plus 2, and then x minus 3. What I would suggest next is that we set our window to go between negative 1 and 1 for x, because those are the curves that we're working with, right? That's what the problem gives us. So negative 1 to 1. And then the smart move is, is to hit zoom zero. What does zoom zero do for us? Yes, zoom fit. So zoom and then the number zero. And that'll adjust the y-axis to accommodate our graphs. There's the graph of your cubic function and there's the graph of your straight line. So let's kind of, I'm gonna copy that graph to our work here and then we'll do some more work okay so I've got points here at negative 1 and 3, that'd be up here, and then 1 and 1 would be over here. Oops, guess I gotta zoom out a little bit. Alright, so one of my graphs looks kind of like this. And then the other graph is just a, a nice straight line. So I think it had points roughly here. And you you don't have to have like a Rembrandt of a of a drawing here to do these things. All I wanted was kind of a, a decent looking graph so that I I knew which function was the top function, which one's the bottom function. I'm still going to try and find the area between these two curves. And I started out in a familiar way. I want the area of one slice. So let's start out that way. Area of one rectangle. Okay, so, well, it's going to be the height times width. What's the width in this case? dx. Good. So the width is dx. Now, in the case of a dx slice, your height is always going to be the top minus the bottom. If we have a slice in the other direction, a dy slice, then the width is going to be right minus left. And we will get to something like that. So the top function is minus x cubed plus 2. Bottom function is x minus 3. Be careful when you're working with this that you distribute that negative sign to both of those terms. So... It's minus x cubed plus 2 
minus x plus 3. And you'd really do yourself a favor in these problems if you simplify this expression before you try and integrate it. So minus x cubed minus x plus 5 dx. Looking good. As far as my integral is concerned, where should I integrate between? Thank you. Negative 1 and 1 dx. Now what catches my attention is that I've got a symmetric interval again. Is this an even or an odd function? Mm, that's, it's close to an odd function. Now, it's not something that you're going to be really good at recognizing. So let's take a look at a couple graphs. Let's take a look at y equals negative x cubed minus x like that. And let me adjust uh, my window a little bit. Let's see. Let's go on the y-axis. Let's go from, say, negative 20 to 20. All right, so it's not something that's it's really easy to see, but the origin is kind of this point of symmetry. So if I have a point on one side of the graph, say here at negative 210, uh, come on, stick, then I'll have a point on the other side of the origin that's symmetric to it. It has origin symmetry. It's not really visually as striking as being an even function. So this is an odd function, but what if I looked at the, the, the actual integrand that I had, which was this, well, it's a plus 5, right? Do I have that origin symmetry anymore? No, I don't, which is kind of a bummer. But here's what we're going to do about that. So let me go back to our work here. Remember the the integral has linearity properties. I can do the integral of this plus the integral of this. I'm going to split it up this way. The integral from negative 1 to 1 of negative x cubed minus x dx plus the integral from negative 1 to 1 of 5 dx. And why did I do that? What's the benefit to me in doing that? This is a symmetric interval and an odd function. All right, that's great. What is it being a symmetric interval and an odd function? Tell me about the, yeah, beautiful. I can replace that with a big goose egg. It's just zero. Nice. That's really nice. Now, if you miss that, is it a big deal? No. No, it's not. You'll still get it if you do your arithmetic correctly. But, boy, it's, it's pretty nice when you can just wipe that out and put a zero there, right? I mean, that's, that's worth noticing. As far as the rest of this is concerned, that's 5x between negative 1 and 1. So 5 times 1 minus 5 times negative 1 gives you 10. So, nice works out pretty good. How are you looking there on um, problem number 18? Doing all right? Good question. It's bounded by this region. So between the top function and the bottom function and between negative 1 and 1. This area, if I were to take the time to shade it in, is is what we just found. That area is 10. I mean, not that I expect people to do this, but I mean, something you could do if you're, you know, a little bit unsure of things is you know, just draw a box around this and say, gee, does it 
Does it look reasonable? Does my answer look reasonable? Uh, in this case, you could kind of draw a line across the top here at x equal 3 and down across the bottom at x equal negative 4. And you have a rectangle of a width of 2 and a height of 7. 7 times 2 is 14. Okay, well, my answer should be something less than 14, and it was. I mean, so, I mean, you can kind of give yourself estimates that way. Uh, I will, on a subsequent example, go through and uh, we'll do a numerical integration for one of these things. Any other follow-up on problem number 18 here? Let's try problem number 24. Again, this is another one of those for which we're going to have to come up with a graph. This is a little bit different because they don't tell you, you know, oh, we're going to look at it between x equal negative 1 and x equal 1. So problem 24, our two functions are f of x equals a cube root of x minus 1. And g of x is just x minus 1, I think. Yeah. So we need to try and figure out, well, what, what region is enclosed by these two graphs? And so we don't have that, that crutch of saying between negative 1 and 1 and then hitting zoom fit. Let's start by putting these two functions into our graphing calculator. So the cube root is under the math menu, math 4, math 4, cube root of x minus 1. And of course, I also want x minus 1. You could put these in in any order by coincidence or accident. I put them in this order. But I need to see where this graph is. And... You know, chances are my old window of negative 1 to 1 is not going to show it. One kind of, you know, shotgun approach, you know, hit everything would be to hit zoom standard. Zoom 6 gives you a window from negative 10 to 10. And then once you see the graphs, then you can kind of zoom in and figure, all right, well, this is where they intersect, etc. And, boy... The intersection is kind of tiny, so I need to zoom in to see the action that's happening there. Do you remember our trick for zooming in? Let's do zoom box. So hit the zoom key, and the first option is to zoom box. So press enter. That puts a cursor at the origin, and just kind of move around a little bit because what you're going to create is one of the vertexes vertices of the box so I'll zoom in over here press enter that fixes one corner of the box and then slide around and zoom in tightly around that area of intersection once you find the other corner you're, you're comfortable with where your box is going to be press the enter key and it'll zoom in with those new coordinates. And this gives me a much better view of my graph. So at this point, you can probably figure out that, oh, gee, I only need to see this between 0 and 2, etc. You can play around some more. But you know what? I think that's good enough. We've got a good graph of this. So let's finish it up. So there's one function, here's the other.
we're going to run into a similar problem here as we did with one of our previous problems, right? Problem six. And that technically you're going to have to set up two integrals. Well, maybe I want to avoid that. Let's start by calculating the area of one slice. Patrick, what's the, what's the width of that thing? Good, dx. So area of one rectangle. So it's going to be top minus bottom times dx. So the top function in this case is going to be x, the cube root of x minus 1 minus x minus 1 dx. But I got to be careful in setting this up, right? I can't just say, oh, well, let's just integrate it from 0 to 2. In fact, if you did integrate it from 0 to 2, you get an odd result. You get zero. And let me be very clear about something here. When you're trying to find the area between these two curves, then you should never get zero. You should never get a negative number. You should always get a positive number. I know that we've dealt with area below the curve and between the curve and the x-axis, and that was a negative or signed area. But if you're just looking for the area between two curves, it should always be positive. I'll distribute the negative there. x minus 1 minus x plus 1 dx. What integral should I set up? All right, integral from 1 to 2. Ah, we need twice that, right? Cube root of x minus 1 minus x plus 1. You know what? Let me, let me go back to here. Let me leave it as negative x minus 1 dx. I think you probably have a suggestion as to why. Um, maybe. Yeah, leaving it like this, then I can use the u substitution, right? And then it'll work out that I have limits of 0 to 1. So. Exactly. If I did it from 1 to 2, then the top function would be the x minus 1, and the bottom function would be the cube root of x minus 1. So the roles there would flip. So that's why if, if you're not careful, if you just integrate directly from 0 to 2 of this function, then on the one hand, you'd get a positive area. On the other one, you get a negative area. They'd cancel each other out, and you'd end up with 0. Hopefully, if you do a problem like this on a test and somehow or another get 0 or a negative number, you just go back and fix it. All right, You shouldn't get 0 or a negative number for these types of problems. All right. Maybe it's not a bad idea to practice a U substitution on this one. So go ahead, finish this one up, do a U substitution.
let's do some calculations here. What's the antiderivative of u to the one third? All right, u to the four thirds over four thirds minus u squared over two. Cool. I can rewrite that as twice zero to one of three quarters u to the four thirds minus one half u squared, which is going to be twice. 3 quarters times 1 to the 4 thirds, well 1 to anything is just 1, minus 1 half, and then when I plug in a 0, I get 0. 3 quarters minus 1 half is 1 quarter, 1 quarter times 2 is 1 half. So we should end up with an area of 1 half for this one. Yes? There are going to be some where you're going to set them equal to each other. Uh, one of the ones that we're going to do coming up would be uh, problem number 26. We'll take a look at that one. Um, and in such cases, to try and find these points of intersection, yeah, you can set them equal to each other. Um, in particular, like I said, 26 is one that's going to involve a graph of x as a function of y. And you're not going to be able to put that into your graphic calculator. So we're going to have to do something creative to try and find its graph and points of intersection. Anything else on problem 24? Okay. Um, should we practice one more of kind of these before we go into x is a function of y, start doing a dy slice. No, you're good? You're good. All right. Let's try flipping things around a little bit then. Um, so what would happen if I try to find the area between these two curves? Can you see a problem with trying to find, um, trying to find the area with a dx slice? So I've got this curve, y equals x plus three, uh, and this one x equals nine minus y squared. All right, it's it's x in terms of y, exactly right, but. The problem is if you're trying to do a dx slice, take a look at your top and bottom function. Over here, it's one expression. Over here, it's another expression, right? So, okay, that means you have to do two integrals. So, okay, we can, we can deal with that. But then what? Well, then the other problem is that over here, to the right of the y-axis, your top and bottom function are the same, right? And that's going to be even more of a problem. Now, in this particular case, you can get away with it. You can get away with something because you can notice, well, gee, it's a parabola. The area is symmetric. Uh, I can just integrate this, um, solving for y as a function of x, and then integrate that between 0 and 3, and then double the result. But boy, that's starting to get really convoluted in terms of trying to find the area. And it seems like trying to do this as a function of x at all cost. So let's abandon that and try this a different way. What if we try to do uh, a slice this way? Can you go to the adjunct faculty office and there should be some extra copies of that in there by the copy machine. Thanks. So what... No, no, no. The... The copy office, right across from mine. Okay. So, what if I did a slice this way, horizontally? 
Well, first of all, what do you suppose the thickness of that slice would be? It's a dy slice. Okay. Now, instead of doing top minus bottom, you're going to do right minus left. It's going to be one of those two. Top minus bottom if you're doing a dx slice, or right minus left. But the nice thing is that that right minus left, that expression is going to be the same throughout our interval. It's not going to change. Whereas working with this one, well, you have to set up two integrals because the top and bottom functions aren't consistent throughout the interval. So let's finish this one off then. Let's try and find the area between these two curves. And it's going to start with the area of this one slice. So that one slice is a dy slice. So area of one rectangle. So it's going to be uh, the width times the height. What's the height in this case? Dy. So you know, let me just write it right here on the. So this is going to be dy. That's going to be your height. Area of one rectangle. The width of this is going to be the right minus the left times dy. So what expression should I put in for these functions? Good. 9 minus y squared. Now again, the differential plays a nice role here. It's telling you that this expression should be in terms of y. So it's going to be 9 minus y squared minus y minus 3. And let's clean that up a little bit. How do you clean that up? Well, we get 9 minus y squared minus y plus 3 dy. Or better yet, uh, let's make that 12 minus y minus y squared dy. Nice. That's the area of this one little rectangle for this tiny little slice dy. But I need to find the area trapped between these two curves. So you could think of this as uh, a Riemann sum. That's just one term. We add up the area of all these rectangles. And as we make the, the slice get really, really small, as we take that limit, that limit passes from a Riemann sum to a Riemann integral, from an approximation to an exact. So we'll integrate 12 minus y minus y squared dy. But here's kind of what Ahmad was talking about earlier. We need to figure out the limits. Your calculator can... Uh, can graph things only when they're functions of x. We have y as a function of x. This is the other way around. x is a function of y. So how are we going to figure out what our limits should be? Well, you need to figure out the points of intersection where these two curves meet. So one way to do that in the absence of a good graph is just to set them equal to each other. Set 9 minus y squared equals y minus 3. I'm going to move everything to the right-hand side because in so doing, I'll have a positive y squared term. So I'll add y squared to both sides. It gives me a y squared. The y is still here. Subtract 9 from both sides. It gives me a 12. Okay. 
how do we solve this one? How do you figure out? Yeah, factor it, good. So this factors as y plus four times y minus three. And I get two solutions from that. y equals negative four and y equals positive three. Where do you see those solutions? Yeah, those solutions are going to be our intervals. But you can see them visually at these points. At y equal negative 4, you have a point of intersection. At y equal positive 3, you have another point of intersection. And you can use those y values to figure out the x coordinates as well. Uh, the x coordinates don't really matter to us in this particular problem. So let's just finish integrating. So from negative 4 to 3. Now it's the setup that I want to emphasize here. So are you okay with what we did to get the setup? That's going to be your biggest battle in working with these things. Now, sometimes what I'll do in order to make things a shorter problem is say, just set it up, or maybe just set it up and finish it with fn int. I think looking at your last exam, you're pretty good at integrating these things with you know polynomials. And I don't want to see you lose some credit using uh, or making a mistake with your arithmetic. So let's finish this off with fn int. So hit math and then 9. We want to integrate this between negative 4 and 3. So negative 4 to 3. Make sure you use the opposite key on the bottom of your calculator, not the subtraction key, to enter in negative 4. Now, I'm going to type it in with x's because it's just more convenient because I've got an x here on my calculator. 12 minus x minus x squared dx. Can my answer in this one be negative? Better not be. If it is, then there's a mistake. All right, so 57. And does anyone recognize that decimal value? Uh, it's 1 6. So here's, here's a little trick that you can do. You can subtract off the 57. And then hit the math key, answer to fraction. There you go, 57 and 1 sixth. So, fifty-seven and one sixth. All right, so the big thing here that I want you to see is that sometimes it's much more convenient to do a dy slice and, you know, kind of leave the comfort of a vertical slice and dealing with a function of x and just deal with a function of y. Actually, you look unhappy about that one. No? Okay. Trevon? Um, just a quick question. Uh, if I mean, like, the MSY where it's bound, it would be possible that you could um, solve uh sometimes you're gonna be able to do that sometimes it's just gonna be really nasty um so yeah it's, it's tough i mean one thing you can do i mean if, if you're really stuck and you're at home is plug it into desmos because desmos can handle y as a function of x you know right here let's take x equals nine minus y squared so it has no problem with with that at all so in a pinch you can use decimals uh, as far as myself and uh, any exam or quiz is concerned I'm not going to give you really nasty expressions uh, X is a function of Y it's just you know if you get this general concept of taking a dy slice then I'm happy um, but one thing do you see why we took a dy slice though 
You see the problem in, in taking a DX slice is that you need two integrals. And then another problem is that you're trying to take a slice from itself to itself. I mean, the top and bottom functions are really the same function. So that's, that's an additional layer of problems that you'd have trying to do it this way. You know, it's it's challenging. I mean, and it's going to depend on the problem. Yeah, do you, can I just put in, you know, y equals 9 minus x squared and y equals x minus 3 and then kind of juke and jive and figure it out? Probably. It's, it's going to take a little sophistication maybe. Um, I, I'm not going to give anything really crazy. So, so I haven't done it that way very often, to be honest. Uh, and I don't want to say that, gee, you can always do it this way because, I don't know, I, I feel like if I, if I give you this blanket statement that you can always do it this way, there's going to be an, an exception. And I haven't thought it through, so uh, I'm not going to endorse that. I'm not going to say don't do it either. I mean, it may be helpful. But let me show you an example of, you know, the kind of things you can do to try and get these graphs in the form of problem number 26. So problem number 26, I don't have it on your handout. It's x is a function of y. And yet we need to try and figure out what this graph looks like. So we've got f of y equals y times 2 minus y. And g of y equals negative y. So both of these are x is a function of y. Now to help us understand what these graphs look like, in the first one let me just say, all right, well let's distribute the y. I get 2y minus y squared, or better yet, minus y squared plus 2y. And let's notice a few things about this graph. First of all, because of the squared term, it's going to be a parabola. But it's a squared term in y, so that means it's going to open left or right. But Kaylee, you helped uh, narrow this down a little bit. What did you notice? Yeah, because of the negative, it's going to open to the left. All right, so it opens left. And let's see if we can't figure out some else, some, some other stuff about this. One of the things that that we can figure out is where this crosses the y-axis. So effectively, this equation is, is similar to x equals y times 2 minus y. That's exactly what this is. How do you find the y-intercepts of a graph? Yeah, set, a, set, set y equal to 0. X, set x equal to 0, right? So if I set x equal to 0, and I could have done it here or here, but this was already factored, then I get two solutions, right? Where does this graph cross the y-axis? y equals 0 and y equals 2. Those are the two points where it crosses the y-axis. Okay. So I know a little bit about what my graph has to look like. Let's see if we can't draw something representative. Actually, I'll do it this way first. There. So it crosses here at x equals 0. Just give me, well, x equals 0, y equals 0, and up here at 2. It opens to the left. So it has to look like this somehow. 
and I'm not taking time to draw a tremendously accurate graph. This is good enough for what we need so far. Now the other equation that we get is this one up here. Effectively that's x equals negative y. Well, that's, just, that's just a linear function. We could rearrange this negative y equals x, or better yet, y equals what? Mm, actually, I think y equals negative x. And the reason for doing that is because that's something that you're more familiar with, right? We're used to dealing with y as a function of x. y equals negative x plus 0. That passes through the origin, a slope of negative 1, and a y-intercept of 0. So... But what I want to get to is kind of, again, addressing Ahmad's question. And that is, well, where do these curves intersect? We can figure that out if I set them to equal to each other. Where does negative y equal this? So let's find the points of intersection. So I got negative y equals negative y squared plus 2y. That's just a quadratic equation. Okay. How would I solve this one? All right, move everything to the right. So I'll add 1 to both sides, or I'll add y to both sides. And then we'll use Newton's method, right? Or not. <laughs> not a groundswell of enthusiasm for that one. Uh, let me factor out a negative y that leaves behind y minus 3. And I think you can probably pretty much read off the two solutions, right? Where would this actually equal 0? y equals 0, y equals 3. Nice. And what's happening is that as you look at these two graphs, you get a point of intersection here at 0 and another one at y equals 3. So 0, 0, and up here at uh, y equals 3. So those are our two points of intersection. The critical thing we need was this rough sketch. And that is, you know, how do these graphs look like? Or what do they graphs look like? And, you know, which one's on top, which one's on bottom, which one's left, which one's right, that kind of thing. So all our work in this problem right now has been to try and find these graphs. Let me pause for a second. If you have some something you want cleared up. All right, we're looking good on that one then. What kind of a slice should we take here? Horizontal. Absolutely. If you take a dx slice, you're going to run into problems here. You're going to go from a function to itself for your top minus bottom. And unlike our previous example, you're really going to struggle trying to characterize the top and bottom of this function um, in different ways. So forget that. Take a horizontal slice here. When you're trying to find the width of it, it's right minus left. Yeah, good question. It's always going to be right minus left. Because that will give you a positive value. Right? So, area of one rectangle.
So that's going to be the width times the height. And your right, the width is going to be right minus left. The height in this case is your dy. So the height, kind of short, but there's your height, dy. The rightmost function is the parabola. So it's going to be minus y squared plus 2y minus the left. And here you have to be a little bit careful because you're subtracting a negative y. That double negative becomes a positive. We end up with minus y squared plus 3y dy. Now, fortunately for us, we did a little bit of algebra a minute ago, and we found where those two points, those two curves, I should say, intersect each other. So that's going to be from 0 to 3 of negative y squared plus 3y dy. Should we finish up the rest of it with uh, numerical integration, or do you want to run through all the, the gory details? F and int. F and int sound pretty good right now. All right. So math 9 between 0 and 3. I'm going to use x's as opposed to y's. So minus x squared plus 3x. dx, 4 and a half or 9 halves. Now, if when you do fn int, you're not getting, you know, something that looks like an integral, it might just leave it as fn int, then the commands that you need to type in are fn int minus x squared plus 3x. And then you tell it the variable you're integrating with respect to, which is x, and then the lower limit, which is 0, and then the upper limit, which is 3. Nice. We're looking okay on problem 26. Good there. Okay. Let's stop things here, and then I'll... Uh, um, do a little bit more in this section.